I am Ritika Chaudhary, uh, the founding member of Palit Art Training and Consultancy based in Dubai. Started my journey as an entrepreneur in 2016 after uh, almost 18 years of working in the business journalism and market research segment and small stint with as economic researcher. And uh, that's and the reason for moving to uh, moving from my uh, parent um, different type of employment uh, to um, entrepreneurship is very personal. Uh, I just finished uh, my MBA late 40s and I thought of you know what to do now you know which course of action should I take and that's how you know when my daughter was applying for um, art and design uh, abroad and she wanted to do her portfolio and that's the first time I realized that why can't I use my uh, lifelong passion for art into something which helps these uh, children who are going to art design architecture fashion design graphic designing to help them build their portfolios and that's how the journey started with a very personal uh, a desire to help students and and necessity which was not there in the Dubai market or the UAE market at that point of time to help people professionally with their uh, portfolios and that's how I started my journey as as initially to help them build portfolios and also after that uh, starting with art classes and giving platform to the artist Shan. Why don't you say tell tell us a story about yours? See, I think I'm born to pay, create. So I'm driven by compulsive desire to create and explore my ultimate potential as a creative person. But before I became an artist, I was working as a counselor in a rehab clinic. But deep inside me, I always used to feel that uh, art is the sole purpose of my existence. So after my near-death experience, I followed my instinct and I made my passion into my profession. It, uh, I'm a self-made person and uh, 2007, I started my uh, career, my first solo show in French Cultural Center in Bangalore. And when I started, I was nowhere in the sense I was not straight from the art school. I never went to art school, I never studied art. Everything is self-made and I, it is not even, I don't use the word self-taught because I, uh, it is not that case. So my intuition is what guides me. So my inner impulses, inner voice is what guides me in my creative process. So it is my passion turned into my profession. What about you, Shankar? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Rithika and Shankar. This is very inspiring. Anyways, so I'll go a little backwards and in the uh, starting from my career where I'm from a middle class family. So when you think about middle class uh, kids, you have two choices. You become an engineer or a medic or a doctor. So I, I chose elimination theory of elimination and went into engineering. Spent 17 years in the IT industry, in the corporate world. And I always had a feeling that uh, I'm doing everything for myself. I'm earning for myself. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it for myself. I've not done anything which is for the society, for the people around. And that was the trigger for me to leave my uh, employee journey of 17 years. Uh, when I was a vice president in a Fortune 500 company, but I left that job and I started my entrepreneurship journey. I started with a hospital. So think about it, it's a very different thing. One, first I was in IT for 17 years. Then I started in a hospital, which is in healthcare. And finally, uh, after one year or so, I felt no hospital, uh, healthcare is not my calling. And I went, started by this company where, which is in the art. And it was a very uh, traditional way of doing business. And we used to sell art. Uh, we have sold so many, uh, art installations, public art, and even paintings, murals, sculptures. And it was like a very traditional way of doing art business. But then my previous journey of uh, of, the, of the IT industry, that kind of gave me a, a kick that, oh yes, we should do something 
leverage the technology and make it little more impactful for people who are in the art industry and not just artist it could be artist it could be gallerist it could be curator it could be art critic art author art framer and so on so there are so many people in the art world so people think that i am in the art uh, uh, this art group so i must be an artist but i am not an artist i am myself not an art curator but i am still there in this because i work for building this art community a better world and to have each other value addition that's a very quick uh, small start of my journey uh, I but uh, 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 just just one small question to uh, continue with what you have said that you started with an hospital and moved to art that uh, so how did you set up that i mean how did you Uh, decide to move from hospital first of all why hospital oh it, so it, 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 there is a nice story and i'll keep it short so that uh, people find it interesting so when i was living the corporate journey my objective was i should do something for the society and healthcare was like the obvious choice you get into healthcare you are actually doing the for some for people so hospital was like an obvious choice but then when i went into the hospital journey i felt it, it, that is not my calling and in that hospital while while we i was running that hospital we actually got the whole compound of the hospital with graffiti you never heard of hospitals having graffiti that kind of bring uh, got that art factor into my life and said oh wow this sounds very interesting combination but i also saw how the artist live at that point in time it sounds very 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 amazing luxurious life uh, from the outside but then when we look at into the artist journey artist life they live a underprivileged life and i we felt that no this is something which we should do uh, and make even a small bit to that community uh, i think we should be a, a, our that should be counted as a success for us that's interesting shan what's your take about it that when he said that artist life is it's not like as glamorous and glorious as it looks from outside and uh, Uh, how, how do you describe you from the rehabilitation center to setting up and now you are into a lot of doing so lot of charity so you know if you can give us an idea of the inside of artist life and yes, still yes. continuing with the journey everything starts from how driven you are so when i started first show 2007 i was nobody and i don't have i, I never had any contacts so. so my guests were only four people it was in per four days first three days not even a soul visited my show and but i still had the faith that my show is going to be a success it my self belief uh, is what uh, my confidence gave me lot of uh, uh, wanted me to explore and wait and see i believed in myself very strongly and fourth day two collectors came and each one bought five paintings so i sold 10 paintings that gave me lot of confidence and courage to go ahead and move forward in my life so that's the first thing and after that i created opportunities i never waited for opportunities to come i don't want magic to happen i want to to be the magician to make it happen so that is how i created because i was not straight from the college or school you know so uh, these uh, uh, galleries and the gallery partners they don't know my potential so they wanted uh, to see me to prove myself then only they wanted to take my work because from their perspective which is very right they want they have to be convinced that my work is saleable and They, uh, if they want to invest on my uh, promotion and my work, uh, they need, uh, they have to be convinced. So I went ahead and I have done three continuously three shows on my own, and uh, three successful shows. I became very popular and uh, well known um, in my city. and uh, immediately the economy crashed so completely gone exactly. so 2008 so i have the ability to stretch myself be go beyond my comfort zone and do things then i had my show without any price tag studio sale without any price tag 
so it, it was a huge hit and it became a sensational news because usually in india nobody does yeah that's that you know. right yeah so, that's that's yeah. something nobody does you know i yeah. mean uh, without so I, I used to yeah. take lot of risks um uh, there was no strategy nothing i used to follow my instinct and do it just keep moving forward but it was a, a huge success uh they my buyers who came usually art buyers if they are interested they know the value of art so they don't give you very less so they paid a reasonable amount and they bought many works and people really who are not interested in art even if you give them free they won't take they don't know how to use it so like that i used to take lot of risks and moving forward i was involved in different circles different social circles art circles and committees so charities live paintings live auctions so that is how i built my profile and my brand right right uh my story is sort of uh, slightly different you can say that almost i jump blind folded you know just following a passion you know i mean uh, i didn't know anything about the ue art market i was connected to artists and all but that's not my core competence i i drew from the age of 5 but definitely more as a passion that so but nothing else in actually first two years i i so i'm against that i in the sense like there is not much of uh, market information was available but i wanted to build up something uh, because i felt there is a gap in the market for serious art education and the people who wants to learn art there are a lot of people who are into art doing exhibitions having galleries selling painting but um, i felt that somebody needs to teach art in a serious manner and to tell people while it gives you solace um uh, and uh, peace of mind it's almost therapeutic but beyond that there is a need for taking it seriously and as a career like the way shankar said that you know the average people thinks that doctors mba engineers that's how the career should move or scientists or researchers or uh, you know corporate jobs i mean in today's world very few people now they have started thinking that art has a huge market i mean whether as an artist whether as a service designer whether as an art lawyer whether as an auctioneer whether as a curator whether as a museum person you know so that's how so but to do that you need to build up a knowledge about art and that's how i started the uh, the venture into teaching art um it was not easy initially of course because i used my all lifelong uh, savings into it and the first one and a half years was um challenging in terms of business development in terms of getting new people the first question people ask does she understands it you know does she so there are, there was lot of challenges but after that it just just started moving into a uh, different directions and uh, today i can say that in seven years of my journey as an entrepreneur i have established palette in the dubai and uae art market in a very very successful way and people know about the brand i don't know whether i'm still i mean the destination is far but i have the journey is very satisfactory shankar what's your yeah. the factors that you know some of the factors if you can let us know that which convinced you that that this business is feasible one is uh, when we started we started with a very traditional way of uh, doing our business which is finding out the network uh, approaching the people showing them the works which possibly suit their requirements and all but then we saw that this is uh, very restrictive in terms of the geography and location and uh, we started exploring what are the deeper problems in the art market and a few problems which we uh, generally don't talk about is uh, uh, which the artists always talk about but not the other people is about genuinity of the art and copying of art so an artist doing something and then somebody else copies it and sells it by, by their own way 
then there is uh, the availability of the provenance data of an art so when we think about uh, the history of the artwork who bought it first how it has been grown how, how, what is the price appreciation which happens over the time these things are not available very easily and that makes it new buyers or new art lovers to come into the art market and that uh, sounds like a nice a uh, challenge for us and i personally like solving challenges and so that is my passion of working so that feels like wow this is something which we should be able to solve with technology and when we started looking at the world we saw that there are technologies which are getting very very involved very very in- included in the art world now technologies like uh, we sh- we have a lot of people have seen okay how facebook instagram is being used for sharing one's art but that is just the starting there there is uh, there is technologies which can actually maintain the provenance details very securely there are technologies which can help uh, manage or maintain and give an authentication certificate which is on the digital world so these are when we saw these technologies being already being used in other industries and then gradually during the lockdown uh, we saw that the technologies are also being heavily used in the digital art world we saw okay this is something an opportunity to use it in in the traditional art form also traditional art form means where we where the artist draws it on paper or canvas using colors pens pencils and all so that's uh, that's something which we saw that the market is going towards that transition but they are accepting so for us we didn't have to do a separate exercise for to say okay do we have a product market fit that is how the tech terminology is used in the entrepreneurship world to shan i just wanted to ask you that maybe can you give us one or two or three points that what made you think or made you determine that the business idea the model that you're going is is feasible and it's doable for you for me as an individual artist initially i never planned i don't i didn't have any business plan in the sense i learned everything through when uh, in my journey when i was going ahead when i started just it uh, only shows uh, nothing else but uh, i realized that only shows na- is not uh, uh, a good thing for an artist we have i have partnership with many galleries in india and abroad so the gallery partnership if you take that is not enough to become what you wanted to be if you are passionate about your work if you want to achieve your goal uh so i am very passionate and i want to explore the full world so i cannot sit and wait for the only depending on the uh, some establishment to promote my work so i want to promote my myself i want to i breathe three months i'll sit and analyze what direction i am going is it good or i have to change the direction uh, and what are the networks i have to build all these things every three months i review i do because um, i am very ambitious and i want to reach the sky so um, simple things doesn't uh, interest me so that is how i plan my things uh, as an individual and i have collaborated with many um, fashion industry and other people and i keep creating i keep working every single day i work for 78 hours So Shan and talked about a nice thing about adopting new ideas and experimentation. Ritvika, what was your uh, journey in adopting new ideas and experimentation? And if you are flexible, if you are open to ideas, possibilities, you can adopt uh, anything. Absolutely, Ritvika, what is your take? Yeah, Shankar, just just to give a little idea before that, I mean, little background before that is that I always toy with new ideas. You know, I did economics. uh instead of doing economic research i went jump into journalism business journalism which is not exact i haven't had any media or media related study experience from media i went to market research uh, you know where i i was in cyprus and i went to market research because i is not uh, finding anything suitable for media so i said why not try market research so that's a corporate i mean hardcore corporate thing after that okay at a very later stage i thought of doing business management which at that stage nobody takes this plunge of doing and studying for two years rigorous and then when i finished it i mean as i told you that the 
very neat one is that the need based and one is that where where there is a gap in the market these two things i have learned of course you know it's a take away from my mba education that there has to be a need gap in the market there has to be some uh, you know some, something which is not available in the market and if you can if you can fill up the gap so it was one on the passion to start something art is not new but to start something new i am never never scared of doing anything new in my life you know so so i think it was a challenge to me to see that because there is not there were not enough uh art institutes or art centers to to teach art more beyond hobby you know most of the places at that point of time which was available in dubai and still today is more like catering to hobbies you know to give as like art as a therapy more as a solution to reduce stress but to as a, as a complementary uh, or parallel education uh, center or art learning center as a, it was not there it is still not there here you know and as you know like in all schools and colleges i mean other than the international curriculum art is still today uh, you know is a secondary subject not a primary subject and it's still not in the mainstream curriculum despite the fact that uh, you know we all talk about stem nowadays you know with a a in art st but to me it was new and as i thought you know i tried to you know just spend for my passion and go jump into it you know seeing that okay let's see what will happen at the most i will not be able to do what i would like to do so that's 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 the spirit we start i started with wonderful wonderful in fact um, uh, in in my career also uh, i have been in the technology world and technology changes every six months so uh, we have been taught we have to be adapting adapting to every new technology every six months and in the art world we saw something very interesting which is nft if you have heard of this which uh, is helping um, though it is there are so many myths about nft but nfts can be very useful for authentication as well as for the provenance management of the art and that is something which we do very closely um but i'll talk about another thing which uh, i'm picking up from shan and ritvika is you both talked about how you adopt to your journeys uh, how you take up new things uh, you have learned new things you have experimented with new ideas and you also have applied the the art of sales so rishan talked about how she got so excited uh, and that gave an inspiration to go on with her first show when when she could sell so uh, there is a new term which i feel is very suitable for what we all were discussing is art premier uh, so it's like art artists who are entrepreneurs as well people who are doing in art they also need to have at least the understanding that there is a necessity of selling also they may not do it themselves they may have take uh, they may take help from others but it is a entire entrepreneurship it is like an institution you you are producing something and there is a lover for that so we have to reach out to those people who loves that kind of art and that means that we have to understand all all aspects we have to we have to understand selling we have to understand marketing we have to understand production meaning which is artistic creation so these are various aspects which an artist have to know now and that's why i, I felt art premier is a is a nice term and that is possibly a very good way to uh, say that this is a new message for all the artists but before we close i think we can also talk about uh, ritvika if you can talk little more about your business uh, what is palette art does uh, so the audience can know little more yes um, we we are into teaching art i started with a, a license which is khda from who is the premium uh, licensing authority for education so we teach all sorts of art here you know along with uh one of the main thrust area is of course building portfolios for college admission both undergrad and post graduation for the people who are applying for uh graphic designing art and design animations architecture interior designing fashion designing and all those areas you know so we help them build their portfolio as uh, in in all these lines portfolio has got almost around 
30 to 40 percent weightage worldwide whichever institute they go into second is of course teaching all sorts of art third is art more like you know art has a healing or the we do address the therapeutic uh, uh, part of art that you know uh, uh, which and we all know after the pandemic that you know people have taken art in a very different way so we we also do teach or we also get into this um, these areas of art you know art healing art as in healing we do help people with uh, or unite people and give them a platform for showcasing their artwork not only the uae artist but artists uh, worldwide uh, through different exhibitions and so it's a platform for promoting art uh, whether it's art, any form of art and the third thing which we do is uh, we do a lot of corporate activities, corporate team building, do commission work for people and installations uh, throughout UAE or any anybody's need or any personal, uh, personal uh, you know, the villas or the buildings that they want to decorate so we do all these sort of things shankar probably you can you can say something about it and then probably the last few minutes we'll talk about the takeaways of the do's and don'ts uh, or uh, the challenges what we can tell our people who are planning to go from employment to uh, to entrepreneurship one thing sure. i would like to tell you is entrepreneurs and artists they share one important quality they both put their heart and soul into it so unless you have that focused attention passion and devotion you cannot be an entrepreneur you cannot be a successful person in any aspect of your life focused attention is what we need to achieve success in any business success happens when you have the ability to use your full potential with persistence passion and patience this is what i would like to conclude so i'll uh, talk a little bit about jumbish which uh, actually the word itself means uh, movement and we used it in our tagline also that this is an art movement about how we are bringing change of thinking for both art collectors and artists uh, in the art world so Jumbish, which means movement and art movement is what we are doing and how we do this is we create we are creating a social platform where artists and art lovers definitely can connect but there are a lot of other people like uh, Ritvika and Shan was also mentioning about curators, gallerists, art critics, art authors, art lawyers, art framers um, and so on. So there are so many people who add value to the art world. They all should be able to connect to each other, add value to each other, and thereby building their business in individual areas. So that's how we create that uh, platform. We are creating platform. We have already launched it in as a beta uh, stage. So it's called jumbish.co for those who wants to go and check that. But now coming to what uh, Shan's uh, conclusion statement was amazing. And uh, uh, I always felt that, uh, see, w whichever career option you choose you have to work hard anyway why not pick up that that particular path which you are passionate about because then you it will actually help you go through that hardship in the first few years which is there for artist which is there for an engineer which is there for a doctor for which is there for a lawyer everyone it has the same challenge better to choose the passion and just follow it and that will help you go through that hardship also See, I was never prepared half of what I went through in life, but because of my inner strength and resilience, I was able to embrace it as it is, turning every adversity into a possibility. So you should have that strength, mental and physical strength and energy to cope up with any adversity and turning it into a possibility. Uh, queuing up from both of uh, Shankar and Shan that if any business is passion driven, it is, there is always a you know, few more percentage of chances of being it successful because you can live with your passion for days and day in and day out and and that gives you all the strength, energy, patience, love uh, to, to follow even if you know the path initially might not be very easy that is one thing. Number two is that um, the journey from employee to entrepreneur 
is you know what i felt is that it makes you a multifaceted personality because when you start doing looking into your finance do your business development start thinking of new ideas and collaboration go into looking into your clients need understanding their needs looking into the operational issues so from from for me i just call it from from a journalist i have become a generalist where i know almost you know all different things in you know in a business all the different aspects of business third thing is that one thing i think advice which i faced is that maybe a bit of research in the field is necessary and you might first you know fill the soil and then go into take your steps which i didn't do because as i said that i jumped blindfolded and um, i swam against the tide uh, tide i tried but it is always helps you know if you can fill the pulse it um, you know it then the journey becomes a little bit more smoother uh, so that's the thing and and maybe a good set of people you know along with it a nice team uh, which always helps to make a successful business you know if you have people like minded and a nice team that helps you you know to have a good team and a good uh, setup to spread your wings in the world